Hello. Uh, today we're going to be working with creating and solving equations. And when you're creating equations, you're writing them from a real world uh, problem or situation. So this one is talking about uh, solving equations and writing equations that involve the distributive property. When you create an equation to model a real world problem, your equation may involve the distributive property. You should always check that your answer makes sense once you finish with a real world uh, problem. So the first thing we're going to do is write and solve uh, for each problem. And our example 1a has Aaron and Alice are bowling. Alice's score is twice the difference of Aaron's score in 5. The sum of their scores is 320. Find each student's bowling score. So what they're wanting is to know well, first of all, we have to find out what one of their scores is, and that's going to help us find the other. Uh, we do know that the sum of Aaron's score and Alice's score is 320. It tells us that right here. We're going to choose a variable for the unknown quantity and then write it, write an equation to model it. And uh, basically, since Aaron's score and difference of Aaron's score, this is telling me that this is the one that I want to use the variable for. And so they're wanting us to use A to represent Aaron's score. And so knowing that the difference of Aaron's score in 5, that's A minus 5. And we know that Alice's score is twice that. So 2 times that. So that's Alice's score. And then we also have Aaron's score by itself. The sum of both of them together is going to give me 320. And so using that information from here, I was able to come up with this equation. Then just as we've done before, you're going to distribute the two, combine any like terms, and then solve for A. So uh, when we combine like terms, just remember that you have one A and then you're adding two A's to it. So to, all together, you have three A's, okay? Now, way to note if this is going to work is we can plug in the answer, which is uh, Aaron had a score of 110. And if we take uh, 110 and then Alice's score, which is 110 minus 5 times 2, and we add them together, we would get 300 and, uh, 320. So we would have the 110. And then Alice's score is this one, would be 210, and add them together, and it does indeed equal 320. So it does make sense. It's important to take that time to go back and take a look and double check to make sure that your answer does work in the equation that you wrote. For example, B says Mary and Carlos and Amanda all collect stamps. Carlos has five more stamps than Mary, and Amanda has three times as many stamps as Carlos. Together they have a hundred stamps. Find the number of stamps each person has. So first we want to write a verbal description of the basic situation. Well, what we need to do is we need to find out the, the one that would get the variable. And when we're taking a look at it, we know that uh, Carlos has five more than Mary and that Amanda has three times as many as Carlos. So Mary is really the one that we need to base all our information off of. So when we're looking at this, we want to make sure that this is the one that we're using our variable for. So it says, let S represent the number of stamps that Mary has. Because Mary is S, and we know Carlos has five more than Mary, we know that Carlos has S plus five uh, stamps. And then for um, Amanda, Amanda has three times as many as Carlos. So if this is Carlos's, then this is Amanda's. So here we have Mary's, then we have Carlos's, and then we have Amanda's and they've already got the three here. So I just have to put the S plus five in here. And then all together they had how many stamps? 100 stamps. 
So we're going to solve the equation. Uh, so we have s plus s plus 5 plus 3 times s plus 5. And then all together that's going to equal 100. I see the parentheses here, so I'm going to distribute first. 3 times s is 3s, and 3 times 5 is 15. And now I'm ready to start combining some like terms. So I have s and s and s. I can combine those three. So I have 3 plus 1 plus 1, that's 5 s's. And then I have 5 and 15. 5 plus 15 is 20. And I'm going to continue bringing this 100 down. I, if I subtract 20, this gives me 80, and bring down my 5s. Uh, divide by 5. Oh, they already have the s there, so I'll take that back off. Divide by 5. And 80 divided by 5 is 16. Okay. So Mary has 16 stamps. Well, how many stamps does Carlos have? Well, remember, this is Carlos. He had Mary's plus five. So five more is 21 stamps. And then Amanda has three times as many as Carlos. So she has three times 21, which is 63. Now, to check and see, does this work, we know that all together they have 100 stamps, right? So if I take 16 plus 21 plus 63, does it equal 100? And it does, because if I take 16 plus 21 plus 63, that does equal 100. And remember, this is how many they had all together. So we'll do your turn number five. We'll do parts of it together. It says, uh, write and solve an equation to solve the problem. A rectangular garden is fenced in on all sides with 256 feet of fencing. The garden is eight feet longer than it is wide. And find, uh, find the length and the width of the garden. So when it's talking about it's fenced on all sides, that is talking about the perimeter. And so we know that the perimeter is 256 feet long. It's a rectangle. We also know that we can use these two formulas, 2 times the length plus 2 times the width, or I can take 2 times the length plus the width. Either one of these works fine. We know that the perimeter is 256. We can use either one of these. Uh, personally, I prefer this one, so let's take um, 256 equals 2 times the length, this is the length, w plus 8 uh, plus, plus the width, which is w. I can combine like terms. This would be 2 times 2w two plus 8 equals 256. I can distribute. So 2 times 2w two is 4w. 2 times 8 is 16. Subtract 16 from each side. This is 240. W would equal 60. So the width is 60 feet. If I know that the width is 60 feet and I need to find the length, I'm going to use this. The length is W plus 8. Well, we know that the W was 60. So the length is 68 feet. Okay. We can create and solve equations with variables on both sides. 
Uh, in some equations, variables appear on both sides. You can use the properties of equality to collect the variable terms so that they all appear on one side of the equation. So we're going to write and solve the equation to solve each problem. Uh, Janine has offered uh, has job offers at two companies. One company offers a start, starting salary of $28,000 with a raise of $3,000 each year. The other company offers a starting salary of $36,000 with a raise of $2,000 each year. How many years would Janine's salary become the same with both companies? Well, we have company A has $28,000 plus $3,000 each year. So that would be $28,000 plus $3,000 each year. Company B has a starting salary, let's change the color here, uh, of $3,600 plus $2,000 each year. They want to know in how many years would the salary be the same with both companies. And then they want to know what that salary would be. Because they want to know uh, when it would be the same, we're going to... Uh, make these two equal to each other, okay? And so that's what they've done here. They've got 28,000 plus 3,000 B in, which is, we use Y, equals 36,000 plus 2,000 in. And then it's just a variable on each side. We do it just like we did before. Solve to find out that it's going to be in eight years. And then uh, they want to know what would the salary be in eight years. So because we know it's 8, we just substitute A back in. And if I take 28,000 plus 3,000 times 8, I'm going to get $52,000. If I take 36,000 times 2,000 times 8, I'm going to get $52,000. So the sal in 8 years, the salary offered is going to be $52,000. Company, moving company charges $800 plus $16 per hour. Another moving company charges $720 plus $21 per hour. At what number of hours would both companies be the same? And then what would that charge be? So company A is $800 plus $16 per hour. Company B has $720 plus $21 per hour. We know that they're going to be the same at some point. We want to find out what that point is. Now we have an equation with a variable on both sides. So we need to solve to find out how many hours it would be for both to be the same. So go ahead and work the problem out to find out what the number of hours are. Once you've done the math, you should have found that it would be 16 hours. Then we're just going to substitute the value of 16 back into the original equation. And so at 800 plus 16 times 16 and 720 plus 21 times 16, this side would be, together they would also equal 1056. Okay. Go ahead and work the next few problems out. If you have any questions, please come see me and I will help you where I can. Thank you.